Tonight on Y News. The, the Duterte administration releases its revised list of projects under its Build, Build, Build infrastructure program. Government agencies brace for Tropical Storm Ramon as it threatens parts of Luzon and Visayas with heavy rains. The U.S. government expresses full support to Vice President Lenny Robredo in the anti-drug campaign. An off-duty Coast Guard officer awaits promotion for saving passengers from sinking fast craft in Cebu. And the dating daan program received silver play button from YouTube for reaching over 100,000 subscribers. Good evening. The Duterte administration revises the list of projects under its Build, Build, Build infrastructure program. Meanwhile, Vince Dizon, the presidential advisor for flagship programs and projects, refutes the recent statement that the government's infra, infra program is a dismal failure. Rosalie Coz reports why. The government's accomplishments on the 8 trillion pesos worth of Build, Build, Build infrastructure program have recently been questioned by the Senate. Following this, the Duterte administration will submit an updated list of its flagship infrastructure projects. Vince Dizen, the presidential advisor for flagship programs and projects, and the president of Basis and Conversion Development Authority admits the government had wrongfully written down projects in its original 75 big and priority projects. He says two projects on this original list have been completed, while many others have been shelved for not being feasible to be accomplished within President Duterte's term. So did you choose the wrong projects to highlight? In the yeah. initial uh, 75? Yes. I'm sure that's going to be the story tomorrow, but yes, we're being honest. That's why we have to revisit. Aside from this, many of the projects already completed are not included on the original list. Dizen has reported the status of the projects under the new list of 100 flagship projects of the Duterte administration's Build, Build, Build program. The official also refutes the statement the administration's infrastructure program is a dismal failure. This is especially because under President Duterte's term, many projects have been approved. The government spending has been higher than that of other governments, and the country's economy has improved. We disagree that it is a dismal failure, and the numbers, I think, speak for themselves. Infrastructure spending is up, way, way up, double, in fact, more than double, and this has resulted in real gains in the economy. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Malacania. Senate Minority Leader Franklin Drillon insists problems in the implementation of the Duterte administration's infrastructure projects exist. But for Senator Sani Angara, feasibility study and right-of-way issues are the primary reasons for the slow execution of those infra projects. Nel Maribohok reports. Senators say they have not seen any list of the Duterte administration's 75 flagship projects. Senate Minority Leader Franklin Drilon wants to find out if majority of those projects are China-funded. Senator Drilon claims there is indeed underspending in the administration. The contribution of government spending to our economic growth is not being met, not because there are no funds available, but because the funds appropriated are not being spent. But Senator Sani Angara says those big-ticket projects will be reviewed by the administration and some may be replaced with other projects that can be accomplished. From 75 infrastructure projects, the Duterte administration will target to get a total of 100 projects started. The senator, however, sees problems in the implementation of the projects. Yung mga feasibility study, usually natatagalan. Yung ibang construction talagang wala pa sigurong yung right of way, I think is one of the biggest bottlenecks. Based on information received by Senator Angara, the nine projects that have been started are three road projects in Clark City, the construction of Binondo Bridge, the rehabilitation of Estrella Bridge, and the construction of a new terminal in Clark International Airport. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, Senate of the Philippines. The National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council convenes a pre-disaster risk assessment meeting 
with representatives from various government agencies in preparation for the onset of Tropical Storm Ramon. Meanwhile, police officers have been ordered to initiate safety measures in areas along the path of the storm. Arlene Delgado details why. The National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council, or NDRRMC, has begun preparing for the possible effects of Tropical Storm Ramon. This afternoon, the NDRRMC met with almost 20 agencies, including the Philippine Coast Guard, Armed Forces of the Philippines, Philippine National Police, Department of Social Welfare and Development, and the Department of Education. According to NDRRMC spokesperson Mark Timbal, they have alerted their regional disaster risk reduction and management counterparts as well as the regional and local units of government agencies in the affected areas. Ang buong bansa naman po natin, meron po tayong mga disaster councils sa local level. So lahat po yan, tuloy-tuloy yung paghahanda. Uh, bago pa man mangyari ang isang emergency or sakuna, nakapaghanda na lahat. With some areas still reeling from the effects of Tropical Depression Kiel, Pag-asa says parts of Cagayan are expected to experience light to moderate rains with occasional heavy rains tomorrow. The Office of the Civil Defense in Cordillera and Apayao, together with representatives of government agencies, have conducted aerial inspection to check the affected areas. Relief operations for families who were affected by the flooding are still ongoing. Meanwhile, to aid in the government's calamity efforts, a Hungarian firm will donate a mobile water treatment compact unit. Today, the Office of the Civil Defense, National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council, or OCDNDRRMC, signed a memorandum of agreement with Hungary Water Technology Corporation or HWTC. According to HWTC CEO Adrian Kish, they chose the Philippines due to its geographical location being prone to calamities. This technology is already tested and one of the greatest advantages is its mobility. It's easy to move this equipment from one island to another um, in a very uh, short period of time. NDRRMC Executive Director Under Secretary Ricardo Halad says it will be a great addition to the government's disaster response equipment. We also have uh, uh, mobile water filtration equipment. Uh, some of them were donated, some were uh, procured. Uh, but none that of this kind of capability that can treat or desalinate uh, water from the sea and uh, produce uh, drinking water. The mobile water treatment unit can produce drinkable water by treating water from any source. The donated unit costs $200,000 or 10 million pesos and can treat 2 to 5 to 6.5 cubic meters of water per hour. It is expected to arrive in the Philippines in February, while the commissioning tests are expected to begin in April. Harleen Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue Camp Aguinaldo. Tropical cyclone wind signal number two is raised over Catanduanes province in Bicol due to tropical storm Ramon. Expect winds from 61 to 120 kilometers per hour in the area in 24 hours. Signal number one remains over Camarines Norte, Camarines Sur, Albay, Sorsogon, and over eastern and northern Samar. 30 to 60 kilometers per hour of wind will be experienced in these areas in at least 36 hours. Pagasa located a cyclone at 390 kilometers east of Katarman, northern Samar, packed with maximum sustained winds of 65 kilometers per hour and gustiness of up to 80 kilometers per hour. It is moving west-northwest at 10 kilometers per hour. Tomorrow, expect moderate to occasionally heavy rains over Cagayan, Isabela, Aurora, Quezon, Camarines Norte, Camarines Sur, and Catanduanes. Pagasa said Ramon is expected to make landfall in the Aurora Isabela area by Saturday. A Philippine Coast Guard officer in Cebu awaits promotion after a heroic act. Even presidential assistant for the Visayas, Michael Lloyd Dino, lauds the PCG officer for putting others first before himself. Gladys Tuabi will tell us why. 
first class Ralph Barahan is now a hero for many. On November 7, 2019, he was off duty. He got an MV Shargao Princess as he headed for a Philippine Coast Guard substation in Cebu. At sea, he noticed the fast craft was about to capsize because of the big waves. The passengers on board panicked and didn't know what to do. Barahan acted fast. He recommended to the captain of the water vessel to prepare to abandon ship. They had all the more than 60 passengers and crew wear their life jackets. Barahan was the last to get off the fast craft. I was kasi siguro sa lakas ng boses ko medyo ano na yung boses ko eh, parang ma, ga, parang galit na ako ba wala mo pa na na over na overpower ko yung panic nila Tsaka kasi sa training namin sana ay kami yung tinatapon sa dagat may mga wasar training kami tapos masyadong strict yung training ng langoy sa amin so sa training na nahirapan ako so na-apply ko agad sa sa totoong buhay na. Barahan said during that time all he had in mind was saving the life of the passengers first. Takot kasi takot talaga ako na may mamatay sa harap ko. Kasi pag parang ako alam ko sarili ko kung susurvive ako eh. Pero pag may namatay sa harapan ko parang hindi ko kaya kasi pagod na ako eh. Pagod na ako so Hindi ko na siya matutulungan. So, watching someone struggle and die in front of you, that's wala kang magawa. Yun yung iniiwasan ko. No casualty was reported in the incident. Promotion awaits Barahan for his act of heroism. Kaya po sa sa bagay na ito, sa kanyang ipinakita, ang uh, ang Coast Guard, ang the whole Philippine Coast Guard po ay proud talaga sa kanya, no? Uh, aside dun sa heroic, buwis buhay po <laughs> yung, yung ginawa ng kasama natin sa, sa Coast Guard. Kaya po, ang, ang sa amin dito, it is, it is the personal result ni, ni, ni Ralph no? na, na naka-embed sa kanya. Yung, it, it, ito yung sinasabi namin sa I Care campaign plan namin na yung mismong sa, sa personal, yung sa sarili mo, yung, yung, yung pag-save mo. Yung ayaw mo na may, may mapahamak, na may mawala na buhay dun sa, dun sa maritime incident na nangyari. Ito yung nagbigay kay, kay Ralph ng, ng kumbaga, dedikasyon para gawin niya yung tamang bagay, yung safe and secure para sa lahat ng pasahero. At dahil sa, sa ginawa niyo ito, ang, ang Philippine Coast Guard, ang buong Coast Guard, ay naghahanda ng, uh, ng award na deserving para sa kanya. Presidential Assistant for the Visayas, Michael Lloyd Dino, also lauds Barahan's bravery and dedication to serve. The official says Barahan has just proved there are still living heroes in these modern times. Gladys Tuwabi, UNTV News and Rescue, Cebu. Volunteers of all sorts came to the rescue of Bahamians in the wake of Hurricane Dorian in September. The locals are trying to recover to date, but they don't feel alone, though they are miles and a body of water away from the rest of the world. Nina Armilio tells us why. A paintbrush in hand. The colors of love in cans. And a smile on his face. Goodness tour painter Benjamin Suarez came to the mud in the Great Abaco all the way from the USA to spread hope and happiness. To this day, people in the town are still recovering from the lashing of Hurricane Dorian in September. To alleviate trauma and the devastating effects of losing their homes and livelihood, the Goodness Tour brought music and art to the community of mostly Haitian immigrants. found that creativity is such a powerful tool for psychosocial support to be able to offer a positive outlet a platform for people that have extreme uh, like experienced extreme trauma to release and to channel that trauma out in a positive outlet among benjamin's artworks on the mud's walls is of a mother and child The 
well as a reminder that the unconditional love of the mother uh, reminds us to be empathetic, patient, passionate, good listeners, and be there for one another as we're going through a hard time. The response of the local community has been amazing, saying their day has just gotten so much better as they were able to witness something beautiful amid the devastation. But to paint on the street, then you're planting seeds by, with everybody that passes by, and therefore the symbolism is, is really important. And for the physical needs of the Hurricane Dorian survivors, many volunteers came to the rescue. Among them are HARP, or the Humanitarian Aid and Rescue Project, composed of Brick Bryant, Ryan Bartholomew, and the rest of the crew. The Goodness Tour, HARP, and other volunteers who came for the needs of the Bahamians plan on staying until this month or the next to make sure the seed of recovery will flourish. The Bahamians, knowing their fellow men have got their back, are ready to rise again, with smiles and hopeful hearts. Armilio, UNTV News and Rescue. Welcome back to One News. We pick up to where Angelo Castro the third left off. I'm Alex Baldazar, and here are the headlines. The U.S. government expresses full support to Vice President Lenny Robredo in the anti-drug campaign. Over 600 senior citizen convicts in the new Bilibid prison appeal for liberty to President Rodrigo Duterte. A Philippine envoy meets with U.S. senators who seek Senator Lila de Lima's release. The Philippine National Police released their list of prohibited firecrackers ahead of the fireworks selling season. And ang dating daan program receives a silver play button from YouTube for reaching over 100,000 subscribers. Good evening. The MMDA will conduct traffic simulation tomorrow, November 14, in preparation for the Southeast Asian or Sea Games from November 30 to December 11. So motorists and other commuters must expect much heavier traffic. Maya Bermudez is in Caloacan to tell us why live. Yes, my good evening. Yes, Alex, good evening. Heads up for motorists. The Metropolitan Manila Development Authority or MMDA is all set as they prepare for the traffic simulation tomorrow for the 2019 Southeast Asian Games Delegates Convoy. The simulation is scheduled tomorrow at 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. The stop and go scheme will be implemented. The convoy will use the yellow lane and no special lanes will be provided for them. Watch out for announcement from the MMDA and other agencies concerned for any road closures. While on November 26th, that's 13 days from now, Alex, expect heavy traffic buildup during the simulation and the SEA Games rehearsal. The Southeast Asian Games hosted by the Philippines will run from November 30 to December 11. During that period, athletes, delegates, and spectators will travel to and from sports venues and their hotels in Tagaytay, Pasay, Manila, and will pass through the North Luzon Expressway, South Luzon Expressway, and other main roads. So to all motorists and passengers, bring with you longer patience as you encounter much heavier traffic. And those were the latest updates. Back to you, Alex. Thank you, Mai Bermudez, reporting live from Caloocan City. Representatives from the United States Embassy in Manila express their support to Vice President Lenny Robredo on her approach to the government's campaign against illegal drugs. Meanwhile, some politicians and human rights group express varying opinions on the Vice President's take on the drug war. Vincent Arboleda will tell us why. The talk between Vice President Lenny Robredo and representatives from different U.S. agencies today on the Philippines' campaign against illegal drugs yielded positive results. According to Vice President Robredo, the U.S. agencies have expressed their full support for the country's drug war. They tackled what's lacking in the current anti-drug campaign as well as the help the U.S. can provide to intensify the drug war in the country. 
These include a clear baseline on the drug situation in the country, amending the Comprehensive Dangerous Drug Act, and intensifying the program for community-based drug rehab. Meanwhile, politicians and human rights groups show different reactions on the designation of VP Robredo as co-chair of the Interagency Committee on Anti-Illegal Drugs or ICAD and the changes she wants to implement in the government's campaign to curb illegal drugs. According to Albay First District Representative Ed Selagman, as the co-chairperson of ICAD, VP Robredo should request for a modest budget to be used to push for such changes. Senator Ronald Bato de la Rosa and presidential spokesperson Salvador Panelo, on the other hand, challenged VP Robredo to join the anti-illegal drug operation to understand what's happening on the ground. As for Speaker Alan Peter Caetano, the vice president should not be all talk. But according to Carlos Conde of the Human Rights Watch, it may be possible for VP Robredo to win the country's drug war. Conde is also in favor of a community-based drug rehab approach pushed by the vice president. Tomorrow, Vice President Robredo is set to meet with ICAD law enforcement agencies. The PNP have said that police personnel will be wearing body cameras during all anti-illegal drug operations beginning December 31. This is one of the changes being pushed for by the Vice President to maintain the integrity of the government's drug war. Vincent Arboleda, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City Philippine Ambassador to the United States Jose Manuel Romualdez on Wednesday met with two American lawmakers seeking for the immediate release of Senator Lila de Lima. Romualdez said he would continue to interact with the senators concerned, especially Durbin, and update them on the cases. Durbin and Markey, along with Senators Marco Rubio, Chris Coons and Marsha Blackburn filed a resolution condemning De Lima's detention. Durbin also filed an amendment to the State and Foreign Operations Appropriations Bill prohibiting the entry of Philippine officials who were involved in jailing De Lima in 2017, which was later approved by the U.S. Senate Appropriations Committee. The AFP Western Mindanao Command will still prioritize their campaign against loose firearms even if the existing martial law in Mindanao gets terminated. Dante Amento tells us why. The AFP Western Mindanao Command will intensify their campaign against proliferation of loose firearms even if the existing martial law in Mindanao will be lifted. The AFP Westman Com spokesperson Major Arvin Jan Encinas says the martial law has helped a lot to recover many unlicensed firearms particularly in Sulu Province, Central Mindanao, Basilan, and Zamboanga Peninsula Region. Dito wala tayong nakikita na napakarami ng mga uh, lost firearms no, sa area natin. Kung kaya yung coordination natin with the local government units, yun napakahalaga yun. Dahil sila po yung nangunguna para makonvince po yung mga local uh, residents po nila in their uh, area na mahikaya at uh, isurrender o isuko o yan over yung kanyang mga hindi lisensyanong baril. The AFP Westmincom data show from January to present, they have recovered 648 loose firearms. Loose firearms are usually used by gun for hire groups for their lawless acts such as those during the election period. AFP Chief of Staff General Noel Clement is expected to visit the Westmincom tomorrow. He will lead the demilitarization of 100 loose firearms which include M79, Barrett, 81 Mortar, and RPG units. Isa po yan sa magiging highlights po natin na magkakaroon po tayo ng demilitarization ng mga recovered sorted firearms sa area ng Western Mindanao Command. The AFP leadership is expected to give an update on the existing martial law in Mindanao. Dante Amento, UNTV News and Rescue, Zamboanga City. It's high time senior citizens deprived of liberty in the new Belibid prison be given attention and their freedom be prioritized, says Bureau of Correction Chief Gerald Bandag. Sherwin Colobong will tell us why. After the clearing operations in the maximum compound of the new Belibid prison or NBP, Bureau of Correction Chief Gerald Bantag met the senior citizens deprived of liberty in the National Penitentiary. Some of them have difficulties in walking, others are suffering from illnesses, and there are those who have not received any visitors. 
Due to the slow process and lack of lawyers to help the old PDLs, their cases have been delayed and their liberty are far from being real. Kaya ang abogado lang na magagamit ko dito sa dami nito ay tatatlo. Isang katutak ang records dito. Kasi yung returnees natin, wala kaming kapangyarihan ngayon na i-release sila dahil nga sa nakarang anomalya. Naghihintay kami dito ng uh, instruction ng DOJ, listahan nilang ibibigay sa amin bago namin sila palayain. Ganun yun. Ganun kabagal nga. Kasi kukunti rin ang tao ng DOJ, katulad namin. Based on data from the Bureau of Corrections, believe it houses 611 senior citizens PDLs. 20 of them are 80 years old, one is 95, the oldest is 96 years old, who is inside the minimum compound. Speedy liberty has been a promise from President Rodrigo Duterte through the Bucor chip. Ang sabi nila, hindi, hindi ka magtagal dito. Umuwi ka na lang dito. Kaya ngayon na hanggang dito, nandito pala ako, hindi ako makalakas. Presidente, paawa ko sa kalikas ng nakasing ang aming kalilya. Pati siya, kapalaraan mo ko ulit. Presidente, hindi mahirap ang hiling namin. Karapatan lang namin na lumaya. Mahawa na po sana kayo, Presidente. Nagkasaraman ako, alam ng Diyos yan. Pero bayad na bayad na po ako, Presidente. Bantag calls for those who want to help towards the liberty of the senior citizen inmates. Kaya nga kami nananawagan eh, para may tumulong para sa bagay na yan. Pag-aralan ang kaso nun. Kung totoo bang nasa listahan, Totoo bang nasa anomalya ang pag-release niya? The senior PDLs hope for nothing else but the fast process of their much-aspired freedom. Sherwin Kulubong, UNTB News and Rescue, Muntinlupa City. President Rodrigo Duterte defies his doctor's advice to take a rest. According to Senator Bongo, the senator adds President Duterte will be even busier next week. Rosalie Cos details why. President Rodrigo Duterte is a hard-working and workaholic person, says his former top aide and now Senator Christopher Bongo. This was Senator Goss' response when asked about the president's stay in Davao City. He also ensures the Filipino people of the president's good health condition. Malacanang had said before the chief executive would take a rest for three days but eventually backtracked the statement. Instead, the president is working from his home in Davao City. Senator Goss says the president had been advised by his doctor to take a rest, but the chief executive did not comply. Actually, sa totoo lang, ayaw magpahinga ni Pangulo. Kahit sabihin mo, uh, he was advised by the doctor to, to rest, ayaw pa rin niya magpahinga. According to the senator, it is normal for the president to stay for a few days in Mindanao and go around. This is because Davao City is the president's comfort zone where he can take a rest and work at the same time. On Friday, the chief executive will attend an event with farmers in North Cotabato. President Duterte is expected to be even busier next week. Sa susunod na linggo, mas lalong very busy si Pangulo, pati kayo busy dahil araw-araw kayo magkocover. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Malacanya. Some vendors in Quezon City are back in the streets amid the continuous clearing operations of the Metropolitan Manila Development Authorities and the local governments in Metro Manila. DMMDA argues if they prohibit vendors on sidewalks and footbridges, it's for the welfare of the pedestrians. My Bermudez will tell us why. Fear and uncertainty are what some vendors in Quezon City feel, especially when MMDA officers tend to conduct clearing operations. But despite the MMDA's continuous operation, some still find their way back. One of them is Lydia, 60, who even if some of her items were confiscated last week, still manages to return to this footbridge in Cubao, Quezon City. Tempered glass, headsets, cell phones, and many other items are available available on this footbridge. Ha? Huh? Matagal na kayo nagtitid ka? Ayun doon lang ako. Bago lang kami eh. Kailan lang kayo dito ng pwesto? Ayun sila. Matag matatagal na yun sila eh. Mahirap talaga kasi minsan nagkakahabulag kami. Minsan umakit sila na yun. Wala, wala kami kalamalag. Minsan alas 6. Ang umaga? 
Oh, minsan na alas 7 sa gabi. Eh, tumatakbo kami. The MMDA says fines and confiscation of items await vendors who violate the rules. The agency closely monitors areas which are commonly trooped by illegal vendors. But the question is, will the MMDA reconsider allowing vendors on the footbridge in the holiday season? Naiintindihan naman po natin na this is their bread and butter, no? Dito ho sila kumikita, ito ho yung pangkabuhayan nila sa kanilang pamilya. Alam po namin yon. Pero habang nagtatrabaho po kayo, number one, nalalagay po sa alanganin yung safety ng ating mga pedestrians. Naaalangan po silang tumawid sa footbridges dahil humasikip. So ang mangyayari, tatawid po sila sa highway, magpagpatintero po sila doon. At uh, delikado ho dahil alam naman ho natin tinatambayan din ho ng uh, hindi mabubuting loob. Ang ilang footbridges ho kapag masyado hong makalat at mataot. My Bermudez, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. The House Committees on Government, Reorganization and on Public Highways on Tuesday jointly approved a consolidated bill seeking the creation of the Department of Water Resources Board that will oversee policies on the country's water supply. The still unnumbered bill consolidated 35 House bills providing for the creation of the said agency. Under the bill, the new department shall be the primary national agency responsible for the comprehensive and integrated planning policy formulation and management of water resources in the Philippines. The bill also calls for the creation of the Water Regulatory Commission, an independent regulatory and quasi-judicial body which shall be under the umbrella of the new department. Proponents of the bill said the measure is timely given the issues plaguing the water supply in Metro Manila. It is also in response to President Rodrigo Duterte's call to lawmakers in his State of the Nation address to create a water department to mitigate the effects of climate change. Currently, the National Water Resources Board under the Department of Environment and Natural Resources oversees the country's water resources. Welcome back to Wine News. The Philippine National Police Firearms and Explosives Office releases the list of prohibited firecrackers. FEO Acting Director Police Colonel Ramil Mitra also warns individuals who will use their firearms during the holiday season. Rosalie Cos details why. As early as now, the PNP Firearms and Explosives Office releases the list of prohibited firecrackers. FEO Acting Director Police Colonel Romil Mitre says they released the list early to inform the public on the prohibited firecrackers still available in the market. This includes overweight firecrackers with one-third teaspoon or more than 0.2 grams explosives, two big or oversized firecrackers with two small or two large fuse that can burn for less than three seconds but not more than six seconds, all imported and unlabeled firecrackers with sulfur or phosphorus with chlorates. The prohibited firecrackers are Piccolo, Super Lolo, Atomic Triangle, Large Judas Belt, Large Bawang, Pillbox, Bosa, Goodbye Philippines, Bin Laden, Mother Rocket, Lolo Thunder, Coke in Can, Atomic Bomb, Five Star, Plapla, Giant Whistle Bomb, and Kabasi. Watusi is also prohibited despite its small size. FEO Acting Director Police Colonel Romil Mitre says they will conduct inspection. Kung during the inspection may makakita ka ng mga pinagbabawal, outright confiscation yan. And then i-destroy natin. Firecrackers allowed inside the firecracker zone in every barangay are Baby Rocket, Bawang, El Jablo, Judas Belt, Paper Caps, Pulling of Strings, Sky Rocket or Quittis, and Small Triangulo. Pyrotechnics that are allowed outside the firecracker zone include Butterfly, Fountain, Jumbo Regular and Special, Lucy's, Mabuhay, Roman Candles, Sparklers, Trompillo, Whistle Devices and other types of lighting. PNP FEO reminded the public not to buy firecrackers to avoid danger. Mitra also warns sellers and manufacturers their permits will be cancelled if they sell prohibited firecrackers. He also reminded those trigger-happy individuals who will use their firearms. Isang violation yan. Kung uh, magpaputo ka, of course you, mapapailan ka namin ng criminal case. Uh, kung ano yung naging resulta ng iyong pagputo, kung nakapatay yan o nakasira ng kung ano man, ayun ang magiging kaso niya. Mitra adds the issuance of permit for dealers is ongoing, while the issuance of permits for retailers is on December 15. 
firecrackers can be sold only until December 31st. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. And for the news abroad, Hong Kong is facing another day of anti-government protests after a night of pitched battle at a top university. At the Chinese University of Hong Kong, police fired tear gas and rubber bullets as protesters ignited fires and patrol bombs until the early hours. Considerable student anger over police moving their operation onto campuses was matched by police warning that the rule of law was close to collapse. Riot police continue to be deployed across the city. The police decision to enter campuses signals a shift in strategy. Correspondents say as they have largely avoided clearance operations at schools and universities. Meanwhile, the Department of Labor and Employment, or DOLE, urged overseas Filipino workers or OFWs and new to stay away from the areas where protests are held. Bolivian lawmakers from Evo Morales' party boycotted a session where Bolivian opposition setter Janine Añez has declared herself interim president of the South American country. But Añez said she was next in line under the constitution and vowed to hold elections soon. Justin Masakayan has the details. Bolivian opposition Senator Janine Añez assumed the interim presidency of the country on Tuesday after Evo Morales, who stepped down at the weekend, fled to Mexico to take up political asylum. Before assuming the presidency, Añez had been appointed president of the Senate. The Bolivian constitution establishes that in the absence of the head of state, the vice president of the country, the president of the Senate, and that of Congress shall assume the presidency in that order. The others had all resigned from their posts in the wake of Morales stepping down. In her first words as leader, Anya spoke of hard days ahead. It won't be that easy, she said, promising to call elections as soon as possible in pursuit of a free and democratic Bolivia. Morales had flown to Mexico City with Vice President Alvaro Garcia Linera to take up an offer of political asylum from the Mexican government. Upon his arrival on the government plane in the capital Tuesday, he thanked the country for saving our lives. Meanwhile, the death toll from protests in the country rose to seven, the Attorney General's office reported Tuesday. In the 23 days of social conflict in the country, Forensic Investigation Institute registered two people killed in La Paz, two in Santa Cruz, and three in Cochabamba, said Attorney General Juan Lanchipa Ponce. The majority of these victims died due to gunshots and blows from sharp objects. Joint Army Law Enforcement's operations are being carried out after Bolivia's National Police told the military it needed backup to quell violent disturbances that have erupted in La Paz and in El Alto since Sunday night. Violent pro and anti-Morales demonstrations erupted in this poor Andean nation after the October 20th election amid allegations by the opposition that the president's narrow first round victory over his main challenger, former President Carlos Mesa, was marred by fraud. Justin Masakayan, UNTV News and Rescue. Australian authorities have warned that massive bushfires raging in two states will continue to pose a threat despite catastrophic conditions easing. Meanwhile, Israeli forces killed a senior commander of the Palestinian Islamic Jihad militant group in the Gaza Strip, setting off waves of retaliatory rocket attacks that immediately raised fears of an escalating new conflict. Jovic Bermas has the details in this report. In Israel, Baha Abu Al-Atta, a senior commander of Islamic Jihad, and his wife Asma died in an Israeli airstrike on their home in the Gaza Strip on Tuesday, officials said. At least 70 rockets were fired at Israel from Gaza after Abu Al-Atta's killing, leaving 17 Israelis injured. They were killed in a series of Israeli bombings which, according to military sources, targeted Islamic Jihad positions, including rocket launching units in the northern part of the area, a military training complex, and sites where armament was manufactured and stored. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said Israel is not interested in escalation but will do everything necessary to defend ourselves. 
in Afghanistan. The Afghanistan government on Tuesday said it had decided to conditionally release three Taliban prisoners in a swap deal with the insurgent group to free two foreign professors abducted over three years ago. In a televised address to the nation, President Ashraf Ghani said the release of the three Taliban members in exchange for a U.S. and an Australian professor was a bitter price the Afghans were paying for peace in the country. The president said the two professors, Kevin King, 60, an American, and Timothy Weeks, 48, an Australian, to be freed from the Taliban captivity. In Australia, New South Wales Rural Fire Service said on Wednesday that 73 fires remained active in the state, out of which around half were out of control. The threat in New South Wales has been downgraded from catastrophic the highest level, but officials urged residents to remain vigilant. Meanwhile, the authorities warned of the danger from fires escalating on Wednesday in the northeastern state of Queensland, where more than 50 fires were burning due to strong winds across the region. Three people have died and more than 100 have been injured by the fires, which have devoured some 300 buildings in eastern Australia, according to data provided by New South Wales Rural Fire Service. Authorities were investigating whether some of the fires, including those burning on the outskirts of Sydney, were caused deliberately. Jovic Burmas, UNTV News and Rescue. radio and television program Ang Dating Daan receives another recognition. Its YouTube channel was created in December 2005, which now has over 100,000 subscribers and more than 15 million views. Nina Armilio has more details. Dating Daan received a Silver Play Button or Silver Creator Award from YouTube on November 10 at the ADD Convention Center, Apalit, Pampanga. This, as the YouTube channel of the longest-running religious television program in the Philippines, reaches and even surpasses the 100,000 subscribers mark. Today, it now has over 116,000 subscribers. The program is hosted by Brother Eli Soriano, the overall servant of Members Church of God International or MCGI, and co-hosted by Kuya Daniel Rason, the assistant to the overall servant of MCGI. Based on its YouTube channel, the program is an on-air Bible exposition that aims to promote and encourage the careful reading and understanding of the untarnished gospel of Christ in the Bible. The program highlights exposés and the study of truth based on the Holy Scriptures. Ang dating daan can also be heard and watched in different languages. The Old Path for English Speakers, O Camino Antigo for Portuguese Speakers, El Camino Antigo for those in Spanish-speaking countries, and El Sintiero Antigo for Italians. Ang Dating Daan first aired on radio in the year 1980 on DWA 1206 kHz then, and in 1983, it began broadcasting on TV. Aside from the silver play button, Ang Dating Daan has received various awards, like the most informative religious program of the year in November 2006 and best religious program in 2011 from Gawad Awards for its North American broadcast. In 2014, Brother Eli Soriano was bestowed the title Best Bible-Based TV Radio Evangelist and Ang Dating Daan was recognized as the best longest-running religious program in the 34th Dangal ng Bayan Awards. Ang Dating Daan airs in all the continents of the world. Several personalities have said they admire Brother Eli's way of preaching. No, so magbabasa ng verse, pagkatapos magpapaliwanag siya, no? Tapos, dinadagdagan niya, galing eh. Nadagdagan niya yung mga personal niyang kwento, mm -hmm. no, nasa ganitong bayan siya, kasama niya yung mga ganito, ganito yung nangyayari. Ako, alam mo, as, as teachers, ako as a teacher, ang daming, ano, ang daming matututunan sa, doon sa, sa start. Just like what Brother Eli and Kuya Daniel Rason say, whenever there's recognition, to God be the glory. And those are the reasons behind the news this November 13, 2019. On behalf of Angelo Castro III, I'm
I'm Alex Baltazar. And before we close, we will recap with today's significant sound bites. Because we need to know, we will always ask why. Good evening. So did you choose the wrong projects to highlight? In the yeah. initial uh, 75? Yes. I'm sure that's going to be the story tomorrow. But yes, we're being honest. That's why we have to revisit. The contribution of government spending to our economic growth is not being met, not because there are no funds available, but because the funds appropriated are not being spent. So, yung mga feasibility study, usually natatagalan. Yung ibang construction talagang wala pa siguro. Yung right of way, I think, is one of the biggest bottlenecks. So, lahat po yan, tuloy-tuloy yung paghahanda. Uh, bago pa man mangyari ang isang emergency or sakuna, nakapaghanda na lahat. Ang abogado lang na magagamit ko dito sa dami nito ay tatatlo. Isang katutak ang records dito. Kasi yung returnees natin, wala kaming kapangyarihan ngayon na i-release sila dahil nga sa nakarang anomalya. Naghihintay kami dito ng instruction ng DOJ Listahan nilang ibibigay sa amin bago namin sila palayain. Ganun yun. Ganun kabagal nga. Kasi kukunti rin ang tao ng DOJ, katulad namin. Anong gagawin natin? Inspection, confiscation, and destruction. Kung during the inspection may makakita ka ng mga pinagbabawal, outright confiscation yan. And then, i-destroy natin.